So I'm just going to read a short prepared statement and then I can take questions. We are investigating a number of recent jewelry distraction thefts and robberies. In some of these cases, a man or woman has approached a potential victim on foot or after exiting a vehicle. They have distracted the victim by offering to sell them jewelry or, or by placing fake gold necklaces around their necks. In the process, they steal items of jewelry, usually necklaces from the victims. In other cases, the suspects have told the victim they are experiencing financial hardship and offer to sell their jewelry at a reduced price. If the victims do not comply, the suspects have used physical force or threats to rob the victims of their money. It appears the suspects are traveling around the city. In some cases, the victims have been elderly and English has not been their first language. There have been 17 incidences in 2014. 10 of these have happened since Friday, March 7th. Since May 2013, there have been a total of 52 reported incidents. Since last Friday, incidents have happened in ver various areas of the city, particularly North Calgary. The investigation indicates there are several culprits involved in the latest cases. Suspect descriptions are both men and women, ranging from 18 to 60 years of age. They are described as either Caucasian and or of Middle Eastern descent. Some of them are described as having Eastern European accents. The suspects have been driving a variety of vehicles as well. These incidents appear to be cyclical, which leads to investigators to believe the suspects travel to various areas. Several incidents are usually reported during a short period of time, followed by little or no activity. Calgarians should be aware of their surroundings and cautious of people they don't know approaching them to sell jewelry. Buying jewelry from individuals on the street is not recommended as it is difficult to confirm the authenticity of the items. People should be aware of people trying to touch them unnecessarily while trying to sell this jewelry. If you feel you've been a victim of such a crime, call police at 266-1234. Give officers as much information as possible, including descriptions of people and vehicles involved. Anyone with information about these incidents or suspects' identities is asked to call Crime Stoppers. Also, if you see this incidents occurring in progress, you're also encouraged to dial 911. I, I can't tell you the total amount, but in a lot of these incidents, the, it ranges from uh, $300 to $800 uh, for a necklace. Um, majority of the items that are targeted appear to be necklaces. Uh, the one MO or the one method they like to utilize is to come up to you, um, be, begin engaging in conversation out of the blue, um, try to sell you or, or try to have you try on one of their necklaces, and during this time they will use distraction methods to take another necklace off you. Necklaces have been the most primary uh, target type of jewelry that they've been looking for, but there's also been reports of bracelets or they will try to get you to try on a ring and take off your necklace, but for them I think they, it appears they feel the most comfort targeting necklaces. Well, these necklaces are majority of the time jewelry, or sorry, gold, and uh, they're used to be converted. And there's a variety of ways to convert these, whether you sell them at pawn shops, or uh, go to a jewelry store, or you can use one of these services that will take your gold, you can mail it in, uh, or something that's uh, like a black market variety where someone just sells it to you um, that's not on record. Very good question. We're always monitoring all pawn shops and jewelries are required to, to keep track of all their transactions and they, this, that's all that information is entered into a database and we regularly or, or daily review those databases to see if any of these uh, property uh, that was sold uh, was similar to what was taken in the crime. Uh, we believe so, but we haven't been in direct contact with other jurisdictions uh, about this uh, recent incident over this last weekend. Are these, take, sorry, are these incidents taking place in a certain location? Would it be a mall parking lot or where are they happening? Uh, some of the incidents are happening, um, for example, a residential street or in a parking lot or a bus stop where people are not uh, totally isolated but they are by themselves, so they can easily approach them quickly without being observed from a distance, and then that's when they use their like distraction techniques or misdirection to engage the person. They will try to approach someone they think is in a position of weakness, whether they're elderly or look like they have a lot in their mind or carrying bags or some of that effect, and basically use that art of uh, surprise to, to engage them and then try to do some sort of distraction technique. 
Uh, we have basically, uh, from the reports, uh, four, so usually two females and two males, and they will travel uh, in a vehicle in pairs, and usually the females are in the rear of the vehicle and the males are in the front from this recent uh, report of incidents. It, it, it varies. It varies how they're engaged. I, I think they, a lot of it's just based on opportunity and uh, they're, they know what to look for. They have some experience in this obviously because they, they, they appear very well coordinated when uh, engaging in this act. Uh, majority, high majority of them had something taken. The majority, like I said, were, were necklaces. You don't have a general value or overall, like if there's been 52 pieces taken? I, 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 don't have have an, I, I don't have an accumulated value, no, I'm sorry. Would there also be cases that probably weren't reported? I mean, I would assume some people are just sort of taken aback, shocked, and at the end of the day think, well, it's one necklace, and are the police really going to investigate this? That's a very good question. Uh, Probably one of the reasons we're doing this is to raise awareness with the public, but also if people are embarrassed, they were uh, targeted or victimized of one of these incidents, we are encouraging them to report this to us because we do uh, utilize the intelligence which helps us to further our investigations. So how aggressive have they been sometimes to get aggressive to people that don't? I did mention that these can be classified as robberies, um, but again, just to clarify what a robbery is, it's when there is theft with violence or the perception of violence. So for it to be a robbery uh, in this setting, a lot of times it's when a person just kind of realizes they are being uh, targeted of a scam and there's, there's a little bit of resistance. They will utilize their numbers to kind of hold or restrain that person to take that object and then flee the scene. So again, that, that breaks the threshold of becoming a theft to a robbery. Has anyone actually been injured? We have no reports of anyone being injured. We, well, they, they are primarily using rental cars uh, from, from the information we get from the reports. So a lot of times these people don't have routes when we follow up trying to find out who they are. They don't live in the city. They don't have any address. Uh, and we can't, we have difficulty in uh, locating them. So again, if somebody uh, feels they're about to be approached or were approached, if they can call us, the sooner the better. And that will uh, provide a higher ratio of success for us to hopefully detect and apprehend them. It's a variety, and I was looking over the incidents. It's it's males in their early 30s to f females that are in their 80s. I, again, they will target you. From what I've seen, is if they if they determine you're in a position of weakness, if they have some sort of leverage advantage over you, whether the artist surprise or wh whatever advantage they feel they have, that's what they're going to utilize. So again, be be aware of your surroundings. Uh, if someone's about to approach you and talk to you out of the blue uh, in, in an unusual situation. That's when you need to really raise your awareness and secure your belongings. So how old are these defendants? Do you have an age? We, we, we've had a variety of descriptions, so I can't give you that specifics. I can, after I can look through my matrix and give you um, specific details about the incidents on the weekend, but it, it does vary in, in ages. They, they are adults. Well, again, we just had a, um, a, a small spike in incidents over this weekend, and that's why we followed up some leads, and now we're asking, uh, we're here for two reasons. One, to ask the public uh, for help if they have any information, any unusual activity they've seen, please call us. Or, or number two is uh, to raise awareness to prevent this offense from happening and give people some more um, knowledge. But you said that there were some dating back to almost a year ago, like May 2015? Yeah. And, and, and Do we think there was anything that or is that when started? Uh, historically, I didn't go that far back, but um, I, I would say it does go in waves and whether it's a liquor store theft, you know, the swarming of the liquor store and 10 people walking in and um, you using that technique, it's, it's a variety of techniques by a variety of different people. I'm more focusing on, on 
the inc the eight incidents over those two days. But yes, a variety of them were our jewelry. Is that what you're asking? Well, I just I just mean like the ones like when Elizabeth talked about a liquor store distracting them. That's not what you're referring to in the release. No. no, no. Everything we're talking about today and in the last spring is business. It's primarily jewelry. Yes. But we have seen historically uh, this type of technique used for different types of uh, of whatever they're trying to to achieve. And have you guys recovered any of the stolen property yet? No, we haven't. What would you say is the best way Calgarians can avoid becoming victims of thefts like of this type? If you feel you're about to encounter these people, look look for a, a place to go to, look to a business to walk through, go walk to uh, where there's other people. Um, just. Just try not to engage them if they think they're trying to engage you. Um, we have had some of these um, disrupted by uh, innocent bystanders or a person observing what's going on, just kind of intervening, and that has uh, got, got them to flee the scene and stop their offense. And so this might be repeating. So, so what are some of the signs of, uh, of encountering these people? They're, they're going to come up to you, just engage you in conversation out of the blue. Um, they're going to try and sell you um, some jewelry. They're going to try and place um, a necklace around your neck to distract you and take something else off you while they're doing that. Uh, they also may have a story. Uh, we've heard of other different groups using this where they say my, my vehicles broke down, I need some money to fix it, there's a tow truck coming, I need to get back to another city. There's a, a lot of these stories where they're, they're asking for cash, they're looking for easy money from people. And it's basically just preying on the most vulnerable that they can find. In, in my opinion, I think they're, they're, they, they prey on weakness. If they, if they feel a person's in and if they have some sort of leverage on them, they will use, utilize that to their advantage. Is there concern just with the incident that there has been threats or, or violence? Um, is there a concern that that could escalate? That's always, that's always a concern, and that's why we're doing this. We're trying to raise public awareness here and, and warning people that if they're about to encounter the situation, then to take some sort of evasive action, walk a different way, walk to where there's other people, get on your phone, call the police right away. Um, we'd rather have us call us and it was something that really needed to be checked out than no one to call and then really needed required it after. Is it really just the same group of people for these incidents and dating back? Dating back, no, we don't know that, but this last um, report of incidents we do feel was the same group. Any particular area of the city? Uh, there's no one area that's narrowed down, but majority of them were in the north. Uh, if that if that breaks it down. And would this be in, in any places where, you know, mall parking lot, places like that, where there could be surveillance video of this? Would you guys be able to utilize this? Oh, we, we look at all means to, to further our investigations, for sure. Is there any, do you have surveillance footage in any of these cases? Uh, I'm not going to reveal that as that investigation is ongoing right now. And that's the problem. A lot of them don't realize for a, a certain delayed time, up to half an hour to an hour. So we're getting this call. They have difficulty recalling some of the information. So again, we're just trying to make people aware of once, once you're engaged by these people and this, these kind of bizarre requests to try on jewelry and buy it and they have a story to go with it, they need to help a relative that's far away or I need to move town. That's when you really need to get your guard up. It, it, something's not right. And please, please call right away and then take whatever actions you can to increase your safety. Is there any type of patterns you've noticed, uh, maybe specific locations, times of day that uh, have contributed to these thefts? So again, like I said, majority of the incidents are reported in the north part of the city. Um, the, the incidents are most likely to occur or have occurred, sorry, the majority of the incidents occurred from between Friday through Sunday and they're usually between the hours of noon and 6 p.m. They do target elderly people and people who do not use English as a primary language. Um, they, they'll approach people on residential streets, parking lots, or bus stops. Um, they tend to use rental vehicles or vehicles that are registered out of province. And, they, and again, they usually travel in pairs. And from reports, it's been two females in the rear of the vehicle with two males in the front.